yeah good evening everyone uh, so participants session of the day is uh, advanced data analytics for internal audit and speaker of uh, this session is mr jairam raj shekhar who is director uh, client relations with sama audit uh, systems and software private uh, limited and uh, about the uh, about the speaker mr J uh, jairam so he is having 15 years plus experience in working with compliance and audit groups of fortune uh, companies and government bodies in leading uh, and he has led uh, implementation of technology enabled assurance programs to test the effectiveness and uh, monitoring of controls he is specialist in risk and assurance activities he helped internal audit and it professionals to learn better tools and methodologies to build stronger assurance programs apart from this uh, mr uh, jairam has trained uh, over 8000 plus users uh, and he has conducted Uh, more than 350 workshops on idea data analytics uh, software smart export uh, exporter which is a sap connector and case wire monitor which is uh, a continuous auditing solution and he is uh, he has conducted these sessions uh, throughout uh, the world uh, in south asia africa and middle east region some of the key organization where uh, he trained the users are uh, from office of uh, cag which is Com uh, controller auditor general of india ministry of finance ministry of defense cbdt reserve bank of india uh, and top 20 auditing firms of india so, and uh, 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 mr jairam is actually certified internal auditors certified information system auditor certified idea data analyst and he is associate uh, member of association of certified fraud examiners so he is having such uh, great exposures and uh, today he will take us through uh, 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 through the advanced data analytics which can help uh, 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 internal auditors to do their audit in uh, with enrich manner or uh, by using or uh, by leveraging technology with this uh, i will hand over to mr jairam and uh, for participants uh, so you can post your uh, questions in either chat box or in the uh, question uh, window and we will take up questions toward end of this session uh, with this i will hand over to mr jairam uh, welcome mr jairam and over to you thank you mr mandeep uh, really appreciate your introduction and giving us an opportunity to address uh, a very enthusiastic uh, participants enrolled on advanced data analytics for internal audit uh, special thanks to mr harish tua uh, mr jitendra gavne uh, yourself mr mandeep and all the senior members from i bombay also manas thank you for putting this together really appreciate it and all the members who've taken out time this afternoon to join us for the session up to 5:30 uh this is a follow up to an earlier session we had on data analytics for internal audit there was a lot of excitement and interest generated in that session and we felt let's take it one step up let's take up certain advanced features in the tool uh and advanced features in data analytics for internal auditor so uh we thought friends that we would uh, engage with you all and uh show you certain interesting uh high end uh, facilities and features in data analytical tools uh, as in my earlier webinar friends uh, i'm keeping the slides to a bare minimum i want to show you more of case studies and uh, use cases and success stories through actual data analytical tools which is what i'm sure you all will find very interesting so welcome once again to everyone and i hope we have a great session together now i would like to start my presentation by giving a presentation premise I was reading an article about a very large diversified conglomerate in Canada which is involved in aerospace defense transport and the article was talking about the risk assurance team within the company now what was very interesting in that article and I think that will set the premise for our session this evening is 
uh, that team was following certain very superior standards of using data analytical tools and artificial intelligence tools within the internal audit function and i wanted to give you a few examples before i actually jump into my presentation one very important thing which the team was doing is that the connect with the auditee the stakeholders where they were obtaining the data from the auditee and the stakeholders which is the most important input raw material for data analytics that process was fully automated there were no ad hoc requests there were no uh, unstructured requests everything happened in a structured indent and the data which would come in would come in in a structured format the input feed into the data analytical tools was structured the field structure was uniform from cycle to cycle and there was no unpredictability in the data that is one thing i noticed number two i noticed that there were two category of users in that article one users who were expert users who were tasked with automating scripts and macros within the audit tools and the other users who were tasked with running the scripts and macros developed and i think this bifurcation of creating an expert user and a basic user allowed for a framework where a lot of innovation could happen within the team and at the same time the person dependency is excluded because everyone in the team had the responsibility to run the automated routines macros and scripts the third aspect which came out very clearly in that article friends was that a lot of pre-built analytic intelligence was being used while the users were given the flexibility to think innovatively out of the box they were also using a lot of pre-built analytic intelligence already available in the software and hence they were a lot using a lot of diagnostic capabilities of the tool now friends you'll wonder why i am starting my presentation with these three aspects from the article today if you survey any internal audit team professional service firm consulting firm the biggest challenge we need to manage as auditors and internal auditors specifically are the following integration discovery automation repeatability these are four cornerstones friends which are going to be the biggest challenge in terms of implementing a data analytical project integration discovery and diagnostics automation and repeatability my presentation today friends is going to explain to you with live case studies on how these four cornerstones can be managed by us and in some way each of us will get a solution on how integration discovery automation and repeatability can be handled in a data analytical project within your organization so let me start off by just covering a few slides i want to start off by talking about a concept which is really creating a big buzzword nowadays around the world and in india and we call that data driven audits friends today the onus is on each one of us to internalize data analytics into every sphere of audit engagements we carry on through data driven audits and the question is what are data driven audits why are we talking about this buzzword today right we talk about ai we talk about ml machine learning right we talk about rpa robotic process automation but are we talking enough about data driven audits so french data driven audits very simply put is leveraging technology within your day to day audits now what kind of technology it could be big data it could be data analytics it could be predictive analytics it could be any of these technology elements but the essence of data driven audits friends is the transition from a manual audit environment and engagement to an automated technology driven environment and engagement system okay and the four elements or angles in the transition process friends is data 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 is at the center of everything we do 
and we look at every control we look at every assertion every process every transaction from the view of a risk what is the risk element in the data the entire process is technology enabled and very important friends for data driven audits to be a successful recipe for each one of us it has to be a continuous engagement activity it cannot be done on a one off basis ki aaj maine isko kar diya that's it i will not do it here after then it becomes an ad hoc one time exercise it has to be ingrained it has to be internalized into every engagement and i like to give you a simple example to support this slide let us say we are doing a payroll audit okay and all of us have been given an opportunity to do a number of payroll audits in our professional careers when you talk about a payroll audit and you talk about let us say a test of control in a payroll audit one test of control which has a physical angle or a manual angle is to check the onboarding process of an employee have you taken a uh, like a uh, no objection certificate from the prior employer have you taken the testimonials the work experience certificates have you done the uh, entry level technical interview the human resource hr interview those are all physical elements and realms of the test of control at the same time friends when you are onboarding an employee there is a element which is linked to data analytics and that element is looking at the master details of the employee right when you are populating the master details of the employee like let's say the provident fund number the bank account number the pan number all the details when you are populating those details to the employee in the onboarding process are you doing a match of those masters financial and non financial with the detail with the details of the existing employees now that process see we all do a vendor duplicate invoice check regularly but how many of us are looking at duplicate employee masters one of the major elements of fraud is fictitious and ghost employees and that element friends of looking for duplicates is the technology it's the technology element of uh, the process and that is what a data driven audit is when you do that day in day out for every employee you onboarding and you're using a proper data analytical tool it is ingrained in the process you're looking at certain risk elements like fictitious employees and friends it's a continuous activity it's not that i will do it in the month of uh, uh, in the month of february because there was no lockdown and then i'm going to stop doing it in the month of uh, uh, march and april and may because there is a lockdown it doesn't work that way it has to be done month on month basis and that is the focus of data driven audits i'm moving on these are the challenges we spoke about friends at the start of my session data integration discovery and diagnostics automation and repeatable analytics now friends let me spend a few minutes just talking about each of these challenges and then i'm going to uh, very shortly dive into the case studies why is data integration a challenge because today a data analytical tool is only as uh, useful or as powerful if it has uh, access to an input feed of data and today if you poll you conduct a survey of why data analytical projects fail not only in india but across the world it is because the access to the data is a big question i've seen projects where data is not maintained within india they're maintained in servers in southeast asia and the internal audit team goes goes ahead and buys a data analytical tool and uh, after a couple of weeks of training they realize that oh we don't have access to the data you need to plan for the integration of your data analytical tool into certain data repositories and that can be either through a direct connection it can be with downloaded files it can be with uh, third party documents like pdf documents which come from outside the business but that needs to be planned and i'm going to be covering in my presentation today two landmark solutions which allow you to have 
seamless data integration through an extract transform load mechanism with SAP. I wanted to give you an example with SAP. And I'm also going to be covering a cloud import utility friends where you can have close to about 100 accounting applications. And this is largely for practicing internal, internal auditors who are using Tally, QuickBooks, uh, ACC Pack. Uh, how you can have direct access to the general ledger, the day book, the trial balance, the master chart of accounts for those application systems. The second element, which is discovery and diagnostics, is it's great. I mentioned this in my last webinar also that training is a very, very important essential ingredient of any data analytical implementation. But once the training is done, friends, there is a element of hesitation in the staff trained as to how will this tool be used you need the system to talk to you and give you certain inputs on what are the pre-built analytics already available within the tool and that's what we're going to be covering in the case study certain pre-built analytics a launch pad a starting point for the use of tools automation and repeatable analytics time and again friends we've seen that uh, analytics tends to uh, germinate or tends to focus on certain employees in the team who are uh, who show a natural ability to uh, of proficiency in the use of analytics and then what happens is that the team leader says okay you're good with the analytical tool why don't you use it the others can use excel now that kind of uh, singling out where you say that you do it the others need not do it i believe that's not very productive it will work in the short run but in the long run it is very important that analytics is not the preserve of a few people. Everyone should use analytics. And that's why I like that article where they had an expert user and a basic user. And the basic users also had the task of running macros and doing some basic interpretations of the reports generated from the tool. So, friends, uh, let me uh, dive into my presentation today where I'm going to show you certain interesting case studies. There are a couple of more slides which are there and if time permits, I'll cover them at the end, but I'm sure all of you would be really wanting to see the case studies. Now, I, sp I spoke about data integration and there is a very powerful, seamless extract transform load device, an ETL device which allows users who use data analytical tools to connect with SAP. And that tool is called the Smart Exporter. It's a tool from SAP, uh, from Audicon Germany, and it is SAP certified. Okay, the tool is coming up on your screen in some time. Now, friends, uh, uh, the challenge with SAP is, if uh, you want to do any form of analytics on SAP, you need to be familiar with the data structures, you need to be familiar with the linkages between the tables. Uh, every table in SAP is a very large animal. I know tables, each table in SAP at least has at least a few hundred fields. So once you identify the table, the, the challenge which follows after that is, Acha, I know the table, but I, I need to know which are the fields within the table I need to pick up. And many times there's a lot of redundancy. The field will repeat within the same table. The field will repeat across tables. And that becomes a big challenge for us so much so that the project actually hits a roadblock at the data discovery stage itself. Which data do we need to pull from SAP? And this tool, the Smart Exporter, overcomes that limitation, friends. Now I'm gonna, actually, I'm not gonna get into too many of the nitty gritties, but I'm gonna show you stuff which all of you would really find interesting. Uh, just like how you visit a website and you like a popular page and you create it as a bookmark, in the same way, you can actually create a data request within the tool. And now because time is a constraint, I'm gonna show you something which is very simple. I'm not going to pull in a very large table. I'm going to pull in a simple vendor master related data set from SAP. So friends, I type vendor master here. And all of you will notice that the moment I do that, I have an option where I can add a favorite, which means this activity of data extraction from SAP is getting saved as a favorite. So the next time, Jeram, if Jeram is not available, it, it does not mean that the extraction of data will fail anyone can run the favorite and get in the data that is the best part so the person dependency is being removed here i go to the tables and the best the best uh, schematic you will see here friends is you get the technical table name with the english name by the side and all of you can see that and what is very 
nice is you have a search box at the top here where you just simply enter an English, simple English vendor master. Okay. And the moment you do that, friends, you're getting both the technical name along with the English name by the side. And I think this is a wonderful feature because uh, you don't need to go running to the SAP functional consultant and say, can you help me? Then that person will tell you, I don't have time this week, come next week, and you're going to lose valuable time. You are independent in the process of extraction of data. Now let's say I take the table LFA1, which contains the vendor master general information, and I take the table bank account details, which contains the bank account details of the vendor. Okay, so I'm able to select multiple tables. Now, the moment you do this, friends, you can actually go into fields and filters on the left side. And this is again a very, very nice uh, feature in the connector, which is Smart Exporter, that uh, most of these tables have hundreds of fields and we really don't need all those fields. Uh, the the most annoying thing about an SAP table is while uh, kudos to SAP for creating the most robust data uh, framework uh, and the most robust data libraries within these tables but there's so many fields and many of the fields we really don't need it in our day-to-day -day audit so here it gives you the complete field listing and you can actually choose the fields you want so for table one i choose the vendor account number and the name uh, you can actually see that coming up on your screen and for table two that the bank account masters i choose the vendor account number and the bank account number so you won't believe it you can actually sit down by yourself use this connector once you have access to the sap environment and you can pull in information and independently interrogate data and friends for all of you who are from the it security field this is only a retrieval of data with proper sap authorization and security protocols in place nothing you're going to be doing everything is being monitored in the back end so there's don't have any fear that you're opening up SAP like a Pandora's box and everything can be accessed. The basis team can actually tell you, pick up only so and so tables. Within those tables, pick up only so and so fields. So that security limitation can be put in place. I'm almost done with this activity, friends. You can go to the final screen and in the final screen, you have multiple options to export the data. So if you're using a data analytical tool like IDEA, you can actually choose idea here directly and that is the best part about the connector that the data will flow directly from sap into idea now if you're not using idea you're using access you're using excel you can even choose csv you can choose access and you get data in multiple formats so you can use the connector as a standalone tool also only for data retrieval and marry it into your excel and access data analytical framework Another nice feature which is there friends is you can either run this task on a live online extraction mechanism. You can actually see that come up on your screen in some time. You can actually run it live now or you can schedule it to run it at a later time. And I think that is a beautiful feature for internal auditors because I am taking only master files which will get downloaded in a few seconds. But if you're taking like let's say the inventory uh, ledger or the financial information which runs into probably a few million line items uh, you would need to stagger it over a period of time and their scheduling is a very good option so i click on run friends and i'm not going to get into uh, the actual process of extraction of the data but i wanted to show you what are the various screens here and when you click on run it starts extracting the data friends and now I am available within idea software, which is the data analytical tool and all of you can see I have both the files available with an idea. This is a direct download from SAP. I wanted to save the time and show you the process uh, seamlessly without actually making you wait to see the download. So you can actually see both the tables that is LFA1 and LFBK have come into idea software through a direct interrogation process and friends all of you will agree with me this answers the question or this remedies the challenge we face when it comes to data integration 
through a simple connector which is sap certified with proper sap settings in the back end you can extract the data very easily and bring it into your analytical tool now once you have the data in your analytical tool that's it the input feed is already set up you don't need to worry friends about download upload excel file ko clean karo text file ko clean karo spend half a day sanitizing the data nothing the data comes in directly from sap into idea and this i think really helps all of us cross that starting hurdle with regard to data interrogation and now that i have the data with me i i'll just show you a quick analytical test on this data before i move ahead friends so that you actually see the intended application of bringing this data in uh, something which all of us do in our respective audits we look for duplicate vendor masters and because the data here contains the bank account number i want to look for the same bank account number mapped to different vendors okay now because the data is in separate files i can actually combine the data together in a single file and i'm going to show that process to you i i know i'm getting a bit into the analytics a bit early in my presentation but i wanted to actually show you the output or the outcome of why we have extracted the data so you can actually see here friends uh, these are the two tables we've uh, picked up from sap that is the vendor master general and vendor master bank account details and i'm actually using a technique with an idea which allows us to graphically link two files together so while we all are familiar with the vlookup in excel this is a graphical vlookup it makes the process much more hassle free and seamless so i'm going to link the two files based on the account number so it's a simple drag and connect you can see that and then we click on okay and i'm going to call this uh vendor master base data so i'm going to give a suitable file name to the data okay this is a very very convenient way of uh, marrying multiple tables uh, brought in from sap and the same concept will work for oracle for navision for uh, tally for any kind of application you're using so friends i've got the data now in a single file you can see that okay and now to show you the demonstration for which we have brought in the data we would like to identify duplicate vendor uh, masters where the bank account numbers map to different vendors so we do a simple dedupe uh, check here friends and uh, this is a, a very very useful feature especially for all our friends from the bfsi sector who do a lot of kyc testing on the data so we just simply say same bank account number uh, different vendor and i'm going to get the file name as a duplicate bank account report okay so i'm giving a suitable file name to the report this is the this is the final output this is the final output of what we intend to achieve on the data which we brought in through a direct integration from sap and uh, when we run this you can actually see friends the result on your screen out of around 1000 odd vendor masters there are 415 vendor masters on your screen where you can actually see that the bank account is mapped to different vendors so so friends this was a simple presentation on how do we create an input feed to sap using a connector once we get the data and what kind of analysis we can do on the data now many a times uh, we deal with applications where there are no ready connectors available so there are connectors available for multiple uh, erp systems but when you talk about let us say acc pac tally you know uh, quickbooks uh, the question is how do we do a direct integration with these systems and this is the question which most of the practitioners will face so i want to give you an example of a general ledger which i have downloaded from tally and you will see the kind of complexity the data has in terms of the look and feel of the data so let me show you the data friends 
and then I'm going to show you a convenient way in which you can directly extract data from the very same application using the cloud import utility. So this is a report file from Tally, and it is a general ledger. So what I'm doing currently, friends, is I'm actually selecting the ledger for import into idea. Now I'm not using our connector here. I'm doing a simple plug and play drop and import process. And the data should come up on your screen in some time. Now, friends, I'm sure all of you have dealt with this data in your respective engagements. These files are so difficult to clean and you end up spending more time cleaning, sanitizing, preparing the data for analysis. And sometimes it really defeats the purpose of using a data analytical tool because you end up spending more time cleaning, sanitizing and preparing the data. So let me just show you how to do this manually and then I'll show you the cloud import utility. Uh, we need to follow a process here which picks up, picks up the transaction along with the uh, general ledger header and it's a rather while it happens kind of simply with an idea but uh, the process is uh, you need you need to take some time to learn the process so you can actually see what i've done is i've highlighted the transaction and i am now masking certain data in the field so that information which i need for the purpose of analysis gets picked up so you can see the numerical mass which I've put there in the header which all of you see on your copy of the screens that is ensuring that certain elements in the data file are getting picked up and the headers are getting left out now I don't want to invest too much of time friends so I'm just going to select certain fields here okay you can just see the process so you can see those blocks I'm selecting within the report are actual fields which will get created with an idea so those three blocks i've highlighted those are going to be the actual fields let me also pick up the header details so what i'm doing now friends is i'm selecting the header details and now you all will notice that this is the header level information which I have picked up. So you can actually see this process requires a bit of learning. While it's not completely out of place, it requires a bit of learning and the file formats change. The complexity of the file changes. Now when I convert this into idea friends, this is how the file will look. Okay, it's going to come up on your screen in some time. Okay. You can actually see since I've actually taken a bit of a shorter cut to get the data in there are certain errors in the process of import. You can see that some information has not come in correctly. Some of the headers have not got repeated correctly and these are the challenges which we may face while working with report data. Now this is a second challenge with regard to data integration friends if you remember the four points from my the agenda for my session integration discovery automation and repeatability this is the second element there in data integration that when i'm working with accounting packages used by practitioners this becomes a challenge so now we have a solution on hand there is a accounting package import which is called the caseware accounting package and this is something which all of you will find very useful now what this does is regardless of the accounting package you could be using tally acc pac quickbooks you could be using different accounting packages and here you will notice that you just choose the accounting package and select the data of your choice okay choose the accounting package select the data of your choice and what this does is certain standard elements from the 
system like the day book the trial balance the master chart of accounts those are readily available for import into the tool you can actually see that so you don't need to worry again friends about doing a download a upload a sanitizing the data preparing the data all of that is not required you just simply click on okay and all the information required the trial balance the day book everything gets imported readily and this is what i wanted to talk about in data integration friends that whether you're using an erp or you're using uh, uh, you know tally or accpac or quickbooks any tool you can ensure that your input feed of data comes directly into the data analytical tool for analysis so you do not need to worry about uh, getting into a download and upload manual interrogation process so when we talk about data driven audits a very very important element in data driven audits friends is you need to have a ready input feed into your database and that is guaranteed by either using a connector or using the accounting package import facility so that was part one of my uh, presentation friends where i talked about data integration now let me move into part two which is uh, a very very important part about discovery and diagnostics now when we talk about discovery and diagnostics right let me first bring the data in and then explain it to you with an example i have with me certain purchase order data okay and this data is in the form of an excel file so i'm not going to be doing a direct connectivity here i'm going to be working with downloaded data now my objective here is to import the uh, data into idea software the purchase order data and now this is what i was talking about at the start of my presentation friends that no matter how well you are trained or no matter how well you understand you, the analysis to be done on the purchase order dump there is always a level of hesitancy when you start doing your analysis right and that is with regard to how do i do make a beginning do i look for purchase orders raised on high cost vendors do i look at purchase order splitting do i look at uh, orders raised at a higher cost when there's a low cost order already open in my system do i look at unreleased purchase order aging what are the various control scenarios i need to study while those come to you as and when you get clear and exposed to the data the real challenge is can we have a data analytical tool use certain pre-built analytic intelligence to give us a ready-made indicators based on risk elements within the data and that is a very nice feature so i'm going to show you two things here i'm going to show you how you can use a discover feature within the tool to get certain pre-built analytic intelligence on the data and then how can we create an automatic repeatable framework where the same discover the same dashboard features get repeated on the purchase order data for another review period okay so two aspects out here we have a lovely feature within the tool here called discover and you just simply click on discover now what discover does is it studies the data and based on the data it gives you certain pre-built inputs impressions indications insights and dashboards on the data so you can actually see it's running on my screen and uh, this is a landmark feature because through this it allows you to move into the data driven audit scenario in a very easy way because it is you remember what we talked about in data driven audits it technology should be integrated into the system here there's an integration which is happening this takes a couple of seconds depending on the size of the data and it's preparing various uh screens and dashboards for us in the back end it should come up anytime now so friends you can actually see here okay it's come up with certain impressions indications exceptions outliers so for example if you look at the very first screen here 
the dashboard is showing you this figure in red here which are ready-made outliers on the data now these are this is done automatically by the tool it studies the data it profiles the data it identifies the high value transactions for you automatically you do not need to do any abc analysis of your own furthermore if you look at the bottom of the screen here it's automatically doing a segmental analysis now friends while a lot of these uh, dashboards happen automatically you can actually tweak it to create your own dashboard so for example if i go into the segmental dashboard here and currently what it is doing it's doing a segmental uh, dashboarding on the unit of measurement which is really not useful for me so instead of the unit of measurement i can do a segmental on the created by so it tells me which user has the highest concentration of purchase orders released by their name or approved by them okay so you can actually create your own framework of preferred dashboards here in the data now you may say okay it's giving me the most common date the most the average value the net value these figures are not very important you may want to identify for example duplicates in the data so you click on the settings here uh, in the field choose the purchase order number and say calculate duplicates this is a very nice feature so it runs and i'm just checking if you're getting any duplicates just give me a minute nothing coming up so far no problem but i'm going to save this particular dashboard i i think i remember the data having some duplicates anyway that may be a bit of a fallout on in terms of the data integrity but you can actually see that that particular box there is reserved for duplicate pos now what i'm going to do is i can actually create my preferred dashboards this way okay and then i can save the dashboard so i click on the save button and i'll call this my discover dashboard view my discover dashboard view so what this would have what would this would actually in a way do for you is when you are running the feature on the same procurement data for another location or another plant or another accounting period when you run the macro which i'm going to show you very shortly these dashboards will automatically get created you don't need to manually create them your preferred custom built view of dashboards will automatically get created and that is the real benefit of discover okay so i have saved the dashboards now what i'm going to do friends is to make it more interesting and exciting for all of you i'm going to run one or two simple procurement tests on the data and show you how you can convert the entire activity of discover dashboarding and the procurement test into a simple repeatable macro so i'm going to do a test to identify my top my top vendors so i do a summarization i choose the vendor and net value so what i'm doing currently is i'm arriving at a listing of uh, PO value sum by vendor. Okay. So this is like a standard MIS report. And now let's say I want to identify the top 10 vendors based on value of procurement. So I do a top records extraction. These are a number of uh, you can say audit fraud analytic utilities which are already inbuilt into the tool i say i want the top 10 vendors based on the value sum and i give the file name as say top 10 vendors by po value okay so now this is giving me one particular report in addition to the discover in the dashboard it's giving me a listing of my top 10 vendors by po value sum and let me take up one more just one more test for so that the macro looks kind of excited 
testing for everyone. I want to do a, a classic uh, rate variation check where I identify uh, the same material bought at the same plant at different prices on the same date. So I do a classic rate variation check where I just simply say same material bought at the same plant. on the same date okay having the same currency but having a different net price so you can actually build your uh, your your control statement very easily through these dialog boxes and let's call this a uh, rate variance check now there's a possibility i may get certain false positives because there are uh, prices where the price is zero you can see that at the back in the data so to ensure i don't get zero value cases also on the result i put in a false positive eliminator by just simply putting in a criteria saying price greater than zero okay this is like a simple filter which we also put in excel and i run the test and i'm getting a list of exceptions so you can actually see friends in row number three and four on your screen it's the same material bought at the same plant on the same date but look at the variation it's significant it's like one lakh fifty thousand and six lakh seventy thousand for the same item bought at the same plant on the same date now these were some of the tests i did now now let's take take a step back when we talk about data driven audits what are we trying to say here you do you apply the data analytical to the very first time you fetch the data from sap using the connector or using the caseware accounting package import component you apply certain analytics you get certain dashboards you are ready to now create a repeatable automatic uh, framework within your analytical tool so what we do at this stage is we go into the audit trail and uh, this is the most amazing part of the tool that everything we have done in the last 45 minutes friends is getting recorded here in the audit trail so you get it both in the form of a graph and you also get it in the form of a table but the real advantage here is the work done by a single member in the team can be made available to a larger audience through a repeatable and automated macro or a repetitive program so we just simply click here on create a macro and we highlight the task friends so i'm highlighting the import of the purchase order data i'm highlighting the rate variation check and i'm highlighting the top 10 vendors by po value sum so now in my presentation today i have run two or three simple reports now imagine you are doing an audit where you have 25 or 30 checklist points pertaining to a purchase order audit you can have all of them bundled into a single macro it is as easy as that you run the task one by one one by one one by one bundle everything into a single macro now i click on finish and that's it you can see the macros come up on your screen friends it should come up on your screen in some time it takes some time that's it so this is like a batch program this is what is going to be the application which will, can be run by any member in your team on the procurement data so if you're a practicing firm and you're working with the same client on a quarterly basis or you're working with different clients who have the same uh, field structure in sap this macro can be readily available this is the most powerful mechanism to ensure you get more work done with less time right you don't need to reinvent the wheel the solution is already available for you so now let's save this i am going to call this uh, po automatic batch program okay so friends uh macro is ready and now comes the moment of truth now is the opportunity for us to run this macro on 
another data file and see how the macro runs and does it give us all the reports at the click of a button does it give us all the discovery and dashboards at the click of a button that is something which we would like to see now what i'm going to do is i'm not going to disturb the work i've done in this project folder friends i'm going to create a new project folder okay give me a minute please which i will call macro playback because I want to maintain the integrity of the work done in the earlier folder. I don't want to overwrite that. And that's why I'm creating a new folder. Now you'll notice something interesting. Let me uh, give me a minute, please. This is something I would need to do. I'm sorry, it will require me to do a few copy pastes. But what I'm actually doing, just to let everyone know, I'm actually transferring, downloading the data for the new accounting period, the PO data for the new accounting period, and pasting it in the new folder I've created. Right, that is what I'm doing. And I'm also simultaneously uh, moving my preferred dashboard file into the new folder. So these steps would have to be done manually. Uh, there are ways in which you can make this automatic also and we can discuss that in another session but this is at a very very basic level friends and i'm also ca capturing the macro okay i think we are almost set up with the administrative part okay so friends now is the part which is a very critical component in data driven audits i have my macro ready okay and i want to ensure the macro runs either at the click of a button manually or through a scheduled task both the options are available with an idea so you just simply open the macro and for everyone's information we are in the new folder we are in the new folder so it's not going to overwrite the data in the earlier folder it's going to run on the in the new folder on a new copy of the data okay so you can actually see friends this is the data with us and all we need to do is click on the run button and the macro will run automatically this is the biggest advantage of using the data analytical tool and you remember i mentioned to you that this we had only built three reports here you can have any number of exception reports mis reports uh, business reports built into a single macro and you can see it runs very quickly even before you take your coffee break and all the reports are available here for you to view you can see that all the reports are available and what is again very interesting is the very first activity which we had taken up which is to create certain dashboards those are also automatically getting created in the visualization panel so you don't need to go and manually create the dashboards again they are automatically getting represented at the click of a button it should come up on your screen in some time and this is why data driven audits is here to stay and data driven audits have immense value in every engagement we take up okay let me just open up the dashboards for your reference today it's taking a bit more of time to refresh on my screen but normally it's pretty quick so not to worry you can see that friends do you remember when I saved my dashboards, I gave it a very, very particular name. I called it my discover dashboard. You can see that's already appearing here. I just double click on that and the dashboard automatically comes up. You can see that. And this is how you can ensure your internal audits and your analytics done within the internal audits are going to be both efficient and effective. This is how you ensure the analytics are automatic. This is how you ensure the analytics are repeatable. This is the biggest advantage of using macros and discover dashboards. A few more interesting aspects, friends, which I would like to cover before I get into question and answers. 
let me go back to my original folder now a very very important activity which we carry out uh, is what we call as identifying high risk audit units okay now the identifying the high risk audit unit could be a part of the internal audit execution at times it could also be a part of the planning stage it would depend on the nature of the audit now the case study i'm going to be showing to you is a very interesting activity where i have data pertaining to sales and sales agent incentives now i'm going to bring in the data first show you the data and then explain to you what the scenario is all about so let me get the data and first friends these are relatively simple excel files so the process of import is going to be rather simple i'm not going to be uh, getting into too much of the nuts and bolts i want to take you directly to the actual test so i'm going to be rushing through some of the uh, basic stuff okay almost there right you can actually see here friends that uh, once the data comes up on your screen i'm going to explain the background of the case to you so if you look at the data there are four fields in the file there is a product market combination there is a week there's an incentive column and there's a sale and units column now my my objective or my plan which i have in mind here to identify high risk audit units is i have a combination of a product and a market so a particular product is available for distribution in a particular market and it's handled by certain agents i want to know which product market combination is a high risk audit unit when i say high risk audit unit i may have hundreds of product market combinations and skus i want to know which product market combination has falling sales and rising incentives so that gives me an opportunity as an internal auditor to focus on those particular product market combinations now mind you in my example i have only around five product market combinations to keep the demonstration simple but you may have hundreds of cases out of those hundreds thousands of cases how do you ensure the data analytical tool can take you directly to the high risk audit unit where the sales are coming down and the incentives are going up so for this particular activity friends you simply apply what we call as a correlation and we've all heard about this we've learned about it in statistics today you're going to actually see how it works on live data now the way correlation works is you need to have two fields which are to be correlated which in our example are sale incentives and sale and units now mind you the fields to correlate need not always be currency it could also be currency with quantity it could be uh, let us say temperature with uh, currency it could be any numerical field right now the audit unit field in our example will be the product market combination this is something which is very critical because normally when we've studied correlation as a part of statistics we understand that it gives you a correlation score which varies from minus one to plus one but what fraud analytics and forensic investigation allows us to do is it allows us to take it one step ahead where you do get a correlation score but the correlation score is available for a particular audit unit and in our case it's a product market combination so you can think of a number of examples you can think of overtime and production right you can think of plant breakdown maintenance and plant uh, sorry plant plant preventive maintenance and plant breakdown maintenance you can think of a uh, number of sales orders received with number of sales returns right now the moment i click on okay what it does is it generates a unique correlation score for every audit unit in the data okay now you can actually see on the screen there 
the correlation score varies from minus one to plus one. Now, if I look at the correlation score for the second product market combination, that's product A in market B, it has a negative correlation, friends, of 0.93. Now, let's see what that actually means by actually going into the data. Uh, let me filter the audit unit product A market B. So it should come up on your screen in some time, friends. You'll notice out of five audit groups in my example, we've identified one audit group where if you look at the column sale and units, the sale is gradually coming down from week number one to week number 10. In the same period, incentives are on a rise. And this is a concern for us as an internal auditor. This is a high risk audit unit. This needs to be investigated. So rather than diving into the data and studying all the product market combinations, you can apply a correlation, uh, filter out those cases having a negative correlation and study only those cases for the period week number one to week number 10. And this is a, a very, very important part of the internal audit execution process identifying high risk audit units friends i would like to keep at least about 15 minutes uh towards the end of the session for question and answers because i'm hoping all of you have lots of questions uh, arising out of the case studies i've covered so i'm going to take up another two small case studies and then i will be ending my uh, presentation uh something which is very interesting from a red flag analytics point of view let me actually show it to you all all of you have probably heard about a technique called fuzzy duplicates now what fuzzy duplicates is all about is i have a master file like a vendor master customer master item master employee master i do a pattern match on the name and it gives me names which are very similar to one another now that's something which all of us have heard about we've used it in excel we have used it in audit tools like idea but now we are going to show you something very different we are not going to show you a fuzzy duplicate we are going to show you a fuzzy join which is a very different dimension let me get the data first into the software friends and then i'll explain the case study to you so if you look at your screen uh, you will see that there are two files which we have imported into idea there's master file number one which contains the vendor masters and there's master file number two which contains the employee masters now mind you we do not want to do a fuzzy duplicate because a fuzzy duplicate would require you to do a pattern match within the vendor master or within the employee master that is not the scope of our presentation this evening we want to do a pattern match across files. We want to show to you how a supplier fund a vendor master file may have a similar name or a similar hit and match with an employee name from the employee master file, which is what we call in red flag analytics as a fuzzy join or a fuzzy lookup. So let's show you how to do it. There are certain apps which are available for use to idea users within the tool. One such app is called the Fuzzy Join app. I'm just going to open it up. Okay, these are available on the Idea Lab and the and on the Idea Support site. It basically opens up a macro which is already available for use to users. All the user needs to do is run the app and follow the instructions on the screen. So what I'm actually doing, okay, let me go about it a bit slow because I can see the screen's not moving very fast. You can actually see that it opens up a dialog box, friends, where I'm choosing the vendor master file at the top. And I'm choosing the employee master file at the bottom. Okay, and you can see it's so simple that anyone having basic level uh, knowledge of that particular utility can run the test. So what are we actually doing here? We're telling the software, run the app 
and match the vendor name with the employee name and match it on a pattern basis so where the names are not the same but they are similar we want to hit and match on those cases we choose a factor that is a fuzzy match factor click on ok and you can see friends the fuzzy join has begun it's really really convenient it's very quick and we've got the result there on the screen okay now let the result come up at your end friends i wanted to take a couple of minutes and talk to you about this case if you look at the result which has come up look at line number one and two you can clearly see that those are not the same vendor names and employee names so that's a false positive that is something you need to deal with when you do a fuzzy join so it's, that's not a big problem you can manually exclude the cases but if you look at line number three look at line number four look at line number five and look at line number six you can actually see the last four entries in the master files are all the same hit and match on the vendor name and the employee name which are arising through a fuzzy join very very useful and i remember we actually use this utility for uh, a kpo bpo assignment where we wanted to do a match on the cab roster data and the employee data uh, we understood that employees are given pick up and drop from home and the cab company charges the company based on the pick up and drop now what we noticed is that they had started charging the company for fictitious trips or ghost trips so the employee was actually absent but they were charging the company for it which was very wrong now there was no common key between the two files the attendance file had the employee code and name but the travel cab roster file did not have a code naturally they will not have the employee code they had the employee name but they had written it in their own haphazard manner by using this particular fuzzy join we were able to identify almost 65 to 70 percent of cases where incorrect billing was done by the cab company and it was only because of this application so a very interesting example and friends my last presentation case study which uh, i will be covering this evening before i jump into question and answers is i want to show you something which is called as a outlier application okay so just like how i showed you the fuzzy join app there is something called an outlier application which is available for use within the tool now let me get the data in first so allow me to import the data now i'm going to be importing a simple sales a sales day book okay allow me a couple of moments to bring the data in okay so i have imported the sales day book it should come up on your screen in some time now friends you remember when we did the dashboarding the discover and dashboarding uh, when we clicked on discover it showed us certain outliers in the data now the outliers were high value sales now that is one mechanism with which you can identify the dashboard or the outlier another test which you can do is something which we call as an outlier test which is available within the idea lab and this is a lot of fun machine learning stuff we basically click on outliers and these are apps which are available by the community for the community right so it has a lot of cool ai ml capabilities and it allows you to do a lot of predictive fun fuzzy alternate data analytic realm stuff so it opens up a dialog box and what we're going to do here is we're going to do an outlier test so i say okay do an outlier test on let's say the customer number and in terms of the numeric field do the test let's say on the sales value so i just simply need to choose the fields here and after i choose the fields what do i want to do i want to identify which are the high value sale entries to certain customers for certain products i have the facility here 
where I can choose the level of outlier scanning. So it, it gives me a drop down here where I can go for either the default scan or I can go for the highest outlier scan. And it's really, really cool. So let's say I go for the default scan, which is a very overview top level check. And I click on OK. Now, what it does is it runs a lot of analytics in the back end and it gives me some very interesting reflections on the data. Okay, it should come up on your screen very shortly. Okay, it's running in the back end. Let's give it a few more seconds. Let me check if it's done. Yeah, I think it's still processing. Outlier analysis complete. Click OK to return to idea. OK. Now, check this out, friends. What it's done is it's given you a summary report. It's more like it's given you an internal audit report of what are the upper limit outliers, what are the lower limit outliers, and it actually shows you the transactions. So it's given you a very simple summary. For example, it's showing you outlier to upper limit exceptions, right? And if you click on the one here, it's showing you which is the case. Now, the reason it's showing you this entry as an outlier, you can actually see the transaction value. It is significantly high. It's not even within the normal range of sales by that company to a particular customer. It is significantly abnormally high and it gives this to you at the click of a button. You don't even need to do anything. You just need to choose the category, choose the numerical field and it gives it to you automatically. So this outlier app is it's still uh, you know in the in a in a developmental stage in the sense that there's a lot of ML capabilities which are being built into it but it gives investigators and internal auditors a lot of food for thought in terms of identifying uh, a, a lot of machine learning based analysis and something which is really interesting uh, I'm sure all of you have heard of the relative size factor test which is a very, very popular test which we apply in forensics to identify the ratio of the highest to the next highest value and to look at, let's say, um, unintended alteration of data, deliberate manipulation of data, accommodation entries. So we have the relative size factor test here and I'm going to be running it on the sales data. So this is again an application, friends. We just open up the relative size factor test. and we run the test and the nice thing is it allows you to choose the file of your choice it allows you to choose the field to run the test on okay and the field with the amount this is like fantastic stuff so you can actually just choose the fields one below the other and click on OK. So it gives you a simple graphical display of the relative size factor it is. It's coming up on your screen in some time, friends. And you can actually see here the very first uh, customer that is customer number 60300 on your screen. Look at the, di the disparity between the highest sale to the next highest sale. It's phenomenal. The highest sale is the blue bar and the next sale is the, the next high sale is the green bar and it allows you to study uh, you know really adverse relative size factors within the data so friends it's been really really interesting bringing all of these aspects to you uh, before we jump into q a uh, i just wanted to take a couple of minutes more and just once again revisit the challenges we spoke about at the start of our session and i hope with the case studies i've presented i've been able to make an attempt to showcase to you how to navigate these challenges and find a solution so we spoke about data integration friends where one of the solutions is to use connectors etl tools 
to use uh, accounting component import components where you can fetch the general ledger data trial balance data directly we spoke about discovery and diagnostics pre-built analytic intelligence that can be done through a simple discover where you can create your own dashboards and it helps reduce the skill set gap in terms of the effort required to get an exception within the tool we talked about automation the work which is done in the tool should not stay with one or two users it should be available for everyone within the team and what this does is it allows you to create a macro which can be automated to run at a particular time on its own or it can even be manually run to give the desired result and yes we spoke about certain apps which are available from an ai ml point of view like the outliers app the relative size factor app which give you some really cutting edge insights into the data as a part of your financial ledger test and scrutiny so friends with that i would like to hand over the session to the moderator and special thanks from me to all of you for staying with me till the end of the program and i welcome questions from you all and i would like to take them up to 5:30 thank you everyone Oh uh, yes, sir. I'm just uh, getting online. Just a minute. Sir. Sure, man. I'll take your time. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And friends, before Menas uh, moves through the questions one by one, I just wanted to place our company websites on the screen for you. There's a lot of useful YouTube contents available, training videos available. Uh, we have a number of e-learning courses for Idea Software in terms of introductory training, advanced training, fraud analytics training, which is available in the Learning Center. So I encourage all of you to go and visit the websites and uh, subscribe to the YouTube videos and also take up the e-learning courses. So thank you, everyone. Yes, Manas, over to you. Uh, yeah, Mr. Jairam, thanks for the insights and uh, uh, sharing the uh, uh, sharing your knowledge. So uh, I'll Thank actually you, I'll Mr. take Mani. questions. Uh, uh, I'll take questions on behalf of participants, right? So uh, and you can respond to that. Uh, so uh, one of you uh, participant has asked, can this tool be integrated with Power BI's? yes so that's a very good question just like how we can fetch data from sap and accounting applications through an inward integration we also have an outward integration facility available where the data within idea can be pushed to power bi tableau and click through an outward third party visualization tool and if you visit the website uh, samaura.com you will see there are some youtube videos which will show you how it can be done uh, next question is what is the price of smart exporter that is one of user want to know about the price if you can share ballpark number uh, may i request the interested user to send in an email to the email id on the screen and then the concerned team will reply to them if it's okay sure uh, next question is uh, uh, whether this tool can be connected to SAP or Oracle. So because there are multiple questions on same line, so SAP, Oracle, other ERP system. So whether it is fungible, that's what user wanted to know. Uh, yes, please. So using the SAP connector, one can connect directly to SAP, and the connector currently works with SAP. I believe there are connectors available in the market for Oracle also, and. Uh, those connectors can be used to pull data into these yeah so one of user has actually asked so he is having sap access but how to connect smart exporter with sap is there any licensing etc for that uh, no so if you're using the smart exporter you don't need to you're not violating the sap licensing norms sap permits smart exporter to connect directly to sap and using certain settings rfc settings transport settings your sap basis team can connect the connector to sap without any violation it is completely approved by sap okay thanks and more so specifically mandeep ji, more specifically yeah. mandeep ji to answer the question no licensing fees are to be paid separately to sap over and above the connector fees okay uh 
next question from user is uh, and uh, so that user actually uh, having query with respect to analytics in manufacturing and production domain uh, right and he wanted to understand whether this tool will uh, help in these areas this because controls are typically different from procurement side definitely the good thing about a tool like idea is it can work with any business process financial accounting technical customer relationship management so when you're looking at production and technical the tool can be used to do yield analysis it can be uh, used to look at certain controls in the production process which require data analytics so yes it can be used in any business process so one of user is having query because in sap there are sc16 table which is actually which are extensively used by internal audit fraternity right so user wanted to know how uh, it is very different uh, as compared to extraction of data through sc16 okay so typically what happens with the sc16 we've noticed is uh, sc16 experiences frequent timeouts when the data is very large sc16 when you get the data downloaded through sc16 it may be in an unstructured format which would require a lot of cleaning what happens with the connector is all those challenges are overcome with the connector the connector can work with unlimited data the connector gets the data in a sanitized rows and column structure it can be made automatic so all those challenges are overcome with the connector and the connector also allows for incremental data downloads So is this tool compatible with Oracle? The connector which I've shown in my presentation is an SAP based connector. That being said, the audience are most welcome to explore. I believe there are connectors available in the market for Oracle also and other ERPs which can be explored. I wanted to just give a demonstration of one connector which we are using for SAP. Oh. So one question is in SAP environment if uh, somebody is not using smart connector but asking their IT teams or user to extract data what should they do to check the data integrity Very good question so let's say i get the data as an unconverted file from SAP or as an excel file and i have imported it into idea the first step you need to do uh, prior to getting into any form of analytics is to do a control total verification check the count of the records check the totals in the data and match it back to the report totals in sap to ensure that you're working with the same data that control total reconciliation is important date range reconciliation is important ensure you're using it for the same uh, you're downloading the data for the right company code the right plans all those checks should be done at the initial stage of data control total verification so one of user has actually asked a question which most of uh, us will having in our mind is this tool available on trial basis or poc basis uh, so what i can suggest is uh, if you look at the screen the presentation slide you can see samalearningcenter.com there are some fantastic e learning courses available for introductory training advanced training and fraud analytics training where in those courses you also get a 30 day fully licensed copy of idea for trial purposes and using within that course i'll encourage users to go and check out those e-learning courses and consider taking up those e-learning courses you will also learn a new tool and also get a 30 day trial copy of the software to use so i think question on post i am skipping because uh, users can uh, connect with you uh, via email right most so welcome. one user most welcome. yeah one uh, user wanted to ask about is there any limits uh, in uh, terms of row or column in idea tool no limit the only limit would be the hard disk of the laptop on which you've installed idea so to give you an example if your hard disk contains 50 gb as the limit and you're trying to bring in a file of say 125 GB then it will max out at 50 GB but nowadays most of our laptops come with one terabyte hard disk so there's literally virtually no limitation you can work with unlimited data so other question is whether uh, this uh, tool can be used for text analytics 
uh, yes you can do uh, just like i spoke about the pattern matching you can do pattern searching like anti bribery corruption is an area where we use the tool in a very big way so you have general ledger data travel data expenditure files where you have narration fields and within the narration fields you want to identify prohibited spends or personal spends items of uh, which are non compliance with the p card policy or you want to identify uh, certain narrations containing words like donation grant gift those can be done very easy through text based analytics so there are search facilities in the tool which facilitate that so uh, there are many questions so uh, is it okay to take some time on uh, q and a or is there any time limitation mr jera no 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 most welcome mr mandeep i'll be happy to answer all the questions Sure. So moving to next question. So next question is, can this tool be also used for cost analysis or cost monitoring? Uh, cost analysis, cost monitoring. When you say cost, you mean C O U R S E? Cost? Yeah. No, no, no. Cost. C O S T. So it is actually oh, cost, more of cost. For, yeah. Cost. Yeah, yeah, why yeah. not? So I mean, I know my examples today in the demonstration were largely to deal with the red flags and control testing, but this tool can be used to identify avenues for cost saving and revenue maximization. Uh, one area which I can just talk about is when we do a travel review. In a travel review, we want to check when an employee has traveled to a particular city, come back, submitted their travel claim, they've claimed a per diem allowance, they've claimed certain uh, conveyance expenses. You want to check are those as per the entitlements? Is anything excess claimed? That analysis can be done through the tool. So you can check per diems which are not as per the scale of the user. You can check someone who's traveled from, let's say, Bombay to Pune by an Ola or an Uber cab. And that journey should take 2000 rupees each way, but that person has char charged say 3500 rupees. So that kind of analysis can be done through the tool. Just to give you some examples. Yeah. yeah. So here I think what user meant to ask more from the analysis of cost element, uh, like rose plant, say, similar, uh, say for an example, my labor expenses per unit across various plants. So these type of Post element user want to yes yes you remember the very first functionality which I showed in the beginning called the visual connector yeah. where you all can link multiple files you can actually benchmark the data across plants with the average data or plant wise data and you can track the costs it's possible yes okay thanks so uh, next question is uh, whether if uh, if any organization take call to go to idea two is there any limitation in terms of number of licenses or uh, uh, is it a enterprise wide license is there any difference so manjeet mandip ji these are desktop based single user licenses so if let's say oh. it's an internal audit team with 20 members and the management would like to cover let's say five to ten members within the team with idea licenses then they would need to get five to ten licenses those five to ten licenses will reside on five to ten pcs and they can be used by five to ten users okay one second i'm actually take your time take your time mandeep ji don't worry yeah so a uh, few of questions are on uh, sharing of uh, this ppt so, Mr. Jerem, uh, whether it will be okay to share this PPT with uh, Menas so that we can upload this PPT on IAA's uh, IA Bombay yes. chapter's website? Yes, I will get it across. Not to worry. Yeah. So, one question is uh, how this software is different from Tableau? Okay, that I think this is a very nice question which even came up in the last webinar which we did. Uh, idea and Tableau while they do have certain areas which overlap they complement each other more than they compete with each other because idea is a powerful audit and fraud analytic tool whereas tableau is a very powerful visualization tool so let me put it this way tableau begins where idea ends the exception reports we get out of idea can be pushed into tableau for better visualization so it's good to use a combination of both so uh, there is a question from one user they have recently installed idea 
can you suggest a training to learn all the functionality and is there any certification available for idea well they can visit the sama learning center.com website where as i mentioned there are three levels of training 101 introductory 102 advanced and fraud analytics these are certification courses so they can actually uh, enroll for these courses take on the course over 30 days go through the pre-recorded videos mcqs self-practice tutorials and get a certificate of completion at the end of each course so i strongly recommend they look at the summer learning center courses e-learning courses yeah and what will be the post of these trainings that is the next question by the participant uh, when they visit the website all the information is available at the click of a button for them they can visit the website and oh. they'll get all the information there and they can enroll online they can make the payment online it's very very simple simple and seamless okay so other question is whether real-time monitoring uh, of financials is possible through uh, idea tool so uh, mandeep ji that's a very good question because when we talk about real-time monitoring it actually entails that the analytic runs within the process before the process executes a command so if i'm doing let's say a duplicate vendor invoice bill check the real-time analytic should run before i make the payment to the vendor it should be an embedded audit module these tools are not embedded audit modules they sit outside the process but that being said they can run as near real-time analytics so as close to the incident as possible so let's say i have a payment cycle where at the end of the day at five o'clock every day vendor payments are made what you can do is you can have the macro run every morning flag the potential duplicates take them up for remediation to ensure that the duplicate payment does not go out either accidentally or deliberately at the end of the evening so it's near real-time analytics in that sense oh. so next question is uh, how it is difficult to write the scripts in idea as well as acl uh, i would like to speak more specifically on idea um, mandeep ji because that's the tool i have been using for yeah. now about uh, 15 years uh, i believe the visual script in idea is a simple dialogue box it's a simple you notice when i recorded it earlier in my second session i just simply went to the audit trail selected the task click on finish and i got the visual script so the good thing about idea is we offer the users the option of using a program based script which is the idea script and a non program based script which is the visual script so you can pick and choose both options are available and the visual script requires literally no training it's a simple plug play click record apply easy um so other question is how this tool is uh, different from sap bods are we talking about some kind of a bi tool within sap is that what the users the participant is referring to correct correct yes uh, well i think without you know taking too much of time uh, i would say that uh, this tool sits outside sap it's not an embedded querying tool or a reporting tool that being said my very first point which i made at the start by presentation is analytics should be available for everyone when we're talking about sap bi we're talking about uh, analytics within sap you're limiting it to a very few people who have knowledge of abap and those querying capabilities within sap which internal auditors frankly do not have so using a tool like idea gives the internal auditors the ability to universalize analytics others what happens is for every bi related query one needs to go to the expert with an sap and that's not recommended so it's it's allowing a larger audience in the internal community to use the tool it's more user friendly it's more intuitive and it's much more easy to apply okay. so next question is uh, how this tool can be uh, can help in uh, branch audits uh, so more from the banking or financial industry side uh, okay i think uh, i'm going to i'm going to basically give that that's a very nice question and thank the user for that uh, there there are some very good publications available 
with the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India called Data Analytics for Auditors Practical Case Studies using uh, idea. It's an institute publication. And if the user can get hold of that, there is a chapter in that publication on uh, data analytics and banking and financial services. And that will give them a lot of information on checklist based based activities from banking and financial systems and if the user would like more specific reference they can write into the email id on my slide and i'll be happy to answer it because there's really lots which can be done for banking bfsi uh, so couple of questions uh, questions left so uh, whether this software can help uh, in doing the text mining or text analytics specifically when texts are not aligned so if it is a non aligned text so can it do just like uh, uh, doing the fuzzy uh, logic check for the addresses itself because certain ways so the way it writes is like cst dot it can be cst or c dot s dot t dot so how it works that's a good question mandeep ji i think the tool has certain uh functionalities which allow you to remove all those special characters spaces unformatted text unstructured text and you can actually come down to the letters and numbers and match the data based on that one such function is a function called strip what strip does is it removes spaces and special characters so like in your example you have cst root and c dot s dot t dot root if i apply a duplicate on that prior to doing a split uh, a strip sorry it will not give me any matches but if i use a strip and then do it it will give me it as it will give it to me as a potential match so yes there are functionalities available okay. so last uh, question which uh, which is there is is idea can collect to uh, can connect to oracle cloud or fusion i believe it can be done but you would need to have the oracle administrator provide you with the necessary permissions in terms of the oracle database the user id password port once you have this information through the odbc with an idea you can connect to oracle uh, cloud and fusion yes it's possible and we have a, a couple of clients using it okay uh, yeah mr jairam with this uh, actually we are through with our q and a uh, session only only one question i couldn't take it so uh, uh, one of participant actually he was asking whether he can get your uh, mobile number in addition to your uh, email id if it is possible you can add in your ppt and then we can upload the same yes, on the I website sure sure i'll be happy to provide that sure okay so with this uh, actually we have uh, come to uh, come towards closure of this session and uh, thanks to all the participants for your time as well as uh, the tender which uh, with which you have uh, asked the uh, question and uh, questions and uh, thanks uh, mr jairam for sparing time for sharing the insights so uh, taking us through the benefits of this tool and how internal audit function can leverage technology uh, in ig domain and uh, also thanks for uh, the, uh, the transparency and the candor with with which you have actually answered all the questions in a nicely and precise manner thanks for uh, Thank thanks you, on behalf of iaa team and the participants thank you mandeep ji for your time today thank you for being with us and once again special thanks to ia india mumbai chapter mr harish dua jitendra gavne ji all the members senior members from the bog and uh, uh, thank you mandeep ji thank you all the participants and wish all of you a very safe healthy uh, period at home during the lockdown yeah thanks sir with this we can log off this session and all participants thank you very much stay safe, uh, stay safe and uh, keep learning so we will be conducting uh, our uh, sessions more frequently uh, as compared to earlier days and uh, will be looking for actually participations uh, from all of you in forthcoming webinars or sessions but this thank goodbye you, and, goodbye yeah, thank thanks, you mandeep sir. Bye. Bye, sir. Thank you. Bye.